YouTubers, diecast collectors. What is up? It is me, the J-Man 63. Peep the shirt, check it out. Yes. How y'all doing today, guys? All right. So, got an unboxing video for y'all. I just got a Lego set done. I was missing only two pieces. I've got it 99.9% .9 of the way done. I'm going to show that off in a minute. And uh, to give you a hint, it is over here. So, it's the new 67 Mustang. So, to start off, we're going to go with least exciting to most exciting. And uh, I just got this uh, at random. So, this was one thing. This is the Jesse James uh, West Coast Shoppers, the uh, L Deuce. And this is all I needed to complete my West Coast Shoppers. And I made the guy an offer. I think I hit him at like $10. So, uh, I have another chopper coming, which is pretty cool. It's the uh, Rotella Speedco bike. So I'm getting that one. I was actually, I uh, bid it on that and I won it for very, very cheap. It's actually $6. It was the cheapest I paid on a uh, bike. So got an auction. <sighs> Unfortunately, FedEx did not refund my package. They rejected it because I'm having issues with FedEx. So I'm not too happy being out $50 via FedEx with the seller refusing to refund my money and eBay refusing to help me out. So I did manage to get the uh, 67 Camaro in red and uh, that will be arriving. So I made that guy's uh, day. So that's good. However, being out $50 for a package sucks. Not going to lie. Um, it's not the worst thing, but still, it's not fun. Now, I don't know what this is to start off. It came in the most random. I'm going to cover that in case it's an address. It came in the most random box. I can't even figure out what it is. And it looks like it's held together <laughs> with three layers of tape. This is kind of jerry rigged, but I hope everything inside is okay. I don't even know what it is. This is the... This is the mystery one I want to start out with because I have no idea. Like, <clears throat> I might have to gut this thing like a dang sardine can. Hold on. Let me dig into her. I might have to just gut this like a sardine can. I don't want to cut myself with this thing and it's all. I just did it. Ah, oh, just going to use that brute strength. All right, what do we got? Because I'm real curious what this is. This is a medium sized box. And I'm curious how he sent this along. What do we got? Universal. Oh, I know what this is going to be. Uh, this is the one I made the dude an offer on. I hope she's intact. So that, I'm just going to pull her up. All right. So I know exactly what we got here. Knowing that it's universal, it's fast and furious. So let's open this up. I hope this is intact. <sighs> I really don't like how he shipped this, by the way. Look at how little bubble packing he used, little material. I pray it's all right. Dang, man, I hate. <laughs> I'm actually, I'm just checking if there's anything loose. Nope. I'm surprised it got here intact. Wow. And by the way, future note to our little seller here that did sell this on eBay. Um, my dude, whoever sold this, these things have tiny little parts, okay? So, even if it doesn't seem right, just, you know, put a little, he could have put a little air bubble wrap. I think the dude was trying to save on his, was really trying to cut corners with that one, but it, it, hey, it arrived all right, so that's good. So let's move on to the next box. But uh, again, to recap, it is Sean's uh, Ford Mustang from the uh, Tokyo Drift. And it's uh, interesting because we have another 67 in Lego we're going to show off. So let's do this one next because I'm actually curious about the contents. I'm just going to tear right through this one and uh, try to finish it up as soon as possible. Oh, Lord, I almost slipped with the knife. You always cut away from yourself, so I probably should remember that. I don't always do it that way, though. Yes, yeah, out. Man. Okay, so I think I got her open. 
All right, next box here to start off. Oh, man, my eye is killing me. I feel a little greasy. So, I don't know what this is. It's in some uh, very nice packaging. This guy did it right. Ah, my M2 machine. Oh, fantastic. This is a small little thing to uh, see here. Try to get this bubble pack open. I'm not going to use this bubble wrap. This is not going to get used at all. Oh, man. I'm glad he got the protection on this one because these M2 machines are about as intricate as these 143s with their parts and stuff. So I'm glad he definitely did it that way. Um, how? Yes. This is the 66 Shelby Gasser. Very, very cool. I forget what exactly the other one is. Let me look at uh, the gassers because I'm I'm just going to go off camera here and Google this right quick. M2 uh, gassers. Let me just see what the old gasser set was because I know exactly which set I have. Um, oh, man, it's going to kill me to figure this out without taking one off my shelf and having to look. Oh, boy. Um, gasser set. I have release one. And let's see, this one is the pony up. I'm going to control zoom here. So pony up is a 66. This is kind of a different Mustang. This instead is a little bit of a variation. Instead, this one has the uh, injector stacks rather than your uh, typical blower. So this actually in its nature is a little bit different. And in fact, this has a few different pieces like the air dam and stuff. It looks like there's let me see if there's any big differences here. Yeah, you got the moon tank. You got the front air dam. It looks like they a lot of that. Um, yeah, there are a few key differences with uh, this one being a Shelby uh, version. So um, I am definitely after that uh, handyman wagon. Uh, so that's going to be a cool one to get. All right, so now we're going to move. Uh, let's see what we got to unbox next. All right, this thing here. I only a small amount of stuff. I'm uh, trying to, you know, keep some money. I'm not really focusing on 118th this whole month. I've only gotten one 118th. Um, but uh, there are some 143rds that I'm going to unbox for you. And I didn't pay too much for them. They actually weren't that bad of a deal. So let me uh, get this thing again. And uh, yeah, split a seam here. Hold on. This tape is tough. This packing tape. <sighs> Got it. Urgh. I just don't want to cut myself. I got to be very careful. I don't like using box cutters. I like using like these itty bitty pocket knives I was given. So the itty bitty pocket knives actually work out a lot better for these. Probably not going to use this box cutter until I change out the blade on it. All right. So. Oh, yes, it arrived early. It arrived early, it arrived early, it arrived early. Ah, uh, who are you going to call? Ah, I wasn't expecting this one today, actually. <laughs> I didn't expect it to show up. Actually, I'm glad I saved this for the uh, third thing to unbox because check it out. Oh, yeah. Dum, dum, da, da, dum, da, dum, dum. Yeah, I, I, you know what, though? I really should have been wearing my Ghostbusters hat. I was. That would make it even better. I was actually very happy to get this. This is the Johnny Lightning Diorama Firehouse. And I know exact. I have a good idea of where this is going to go. I got to get a big nail to nail through my foam and to hang up in my living room. Or, I don't know. I'm going to figure out where to display this, but this is very cool. Yeah. Um, hmm. You know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking this might go near my Ectotron, honestly, next to Ray's stance. Yeah, I'm a big Ghostbusters fan, as you already know. And you've already seen on my channel. You already pretty much know I'm a huge fan. Wow, 
That is so cool. Look at how 3D it looks. That is awesome. Even got the Ecto one in front. That is awesome. All right, so I think I have an itty bitty pocket knife here. Let me see if I got one because I do not trust this box cutter for the next one in my mind. By the way, guys, I'm running on very little sleep. I have had a very hectic week, and uh, I've had a lot I've had to plan for. So I'm a bit off my rocker today, but I'm still hanging in there. Oh, I found the itty-bitty knife. This is my preferred tool for all my unboxing videos. Okay, so let's go now with something that a lot of you car culture guys are going to know about. R. W.B. Raw Welt Begraft. Rough world in German. Begraft is understanding. Nakai son. If that name doesn't ring a bell, then it should because he is a Japanese tuner, a uh, car culture person that took Porsches and uh, cut them up. And a lot of peers do not like him for that because a lot of these air cooled Porsches are very valuable now. And, uh, yeah, some people are not into it, but I like it, and I have a little strip of shelf saved up for it, and I cannot wait to dig these out. And, in fact, the next two I want to get, I want to get the Rotana. I think there's three in here, I must say. Um, this is actually a pretty dang big box, so I'm very curious what's in this. I want to know. So, yeah, I want to get a few more RWBs. I definitely want to get Rotana. Because uh, that's the one that started his career. And uh, if you haven't watched the Up to Speed video on Donut Media, you definitely should. RWB is a very significant company in car culture. And uh, these were basic, These are basically like JDM Porsches. He puts Japanese parts on these Porsches and outfits them like crazy. And these are my first, I'm going to say these are my first Tarmac Works pieces. I am very happy to get these. I had my first Mini GT that I got. I'm very happy with my Mini GT. Now, let's see if indeed Tarmac Works is a good... Ah, yes, I like the way they pack these. Look at how nicely packed. Not showing an address, am I? Okay. All right, look at how nicely packed these are. Wow, he really... I don't know who sent these, but I would totally do business based on how little these cost me. Normally, these are $40, $143, but I got them for a very good deal. And in fact, all these together shipped. I am not exactly what I paid, but these weren't too bad for the price. And uh, Tarmac Works is, let me make sure there's nothing else in here. It's the packing peanuts. Oh, I hate these things. I wish they'd use my warrant. All right. Hang, look at all that. Uh, look at all that seagull food. <laughs> <laughs> all right so now that i've done that that was a pain all right now i've got my cutter let's go and let's do this one first what i pick up oh it's just a little card what is this thing oh hey surplus goodies yes yeah, surplus goodies Diecast some more. Thank you for your eBay purchase. We strive for 100% satisfaction. If you're happy with your purchase, please leave a five-star rating. If you want stuff on eBay, the Lamley Group mentions them. Check out Surplus Goodies for all your diecast needs as well. And also check out 3000 Toys. Make sure you check out Diecast Models Wholesale. I rep these companies big because this is the ones I order from a lot. Just avoid the FOMO altogether, avoid the store, avoid the scalpers. Just order your stuff online, guys. It's way better that way, anyhow, if you really want the stuff. So, let's dig into this first little RWB. We got here this little 140 scale gem. All right. Wow. Nicely packed. Thank you, Surplus Goodies. Oh, man, I cannot wait. I've been chomping at the bit to get these Tarmac Works pieces because this is something that's been on my my radar for a while since I heard about RWB, since I've seen the need for speed games, since I've actually followed Nakai Sun. This has been on my radar to get since Tarmac Works announced these. 
and uh, at most uh, price points, forty dollars if you can get it for cheaper. I got them for twenty five dollars, and the shipping was like a buck. So for the way he shipped it, though, man, I forgot exactly what I paid, but I didn't pay a ton of money for these. They weren't exactly. It wasn't expensive for the price I paid. It's a little bit more than green light one uh, forty third scale money, but it wasn't much more. So now I'm curious how these stack up to green light, and I'm getting this plastic undone. This is the biggest pain in the butt of these because there's a lot of plastic here. Ah, man, they went overboard on this. I'm gonna take my cutter. Oh, wait, I got it opposite. No wonder I'm not cutting through nothing. I got the blade the wrong way. Derp. So here's the first RWB Porsche. Oh, wow. Oh, that's very interesting packaging. So there's a little sleeve on the outside. And then you basically have your car inside the sleeve. I'm definitely keeping this in this outer packaging. But this is the uh, Sopranos Pink Pig type uh, color scheme livery, which is really cool. And this is reminiscent of the Porsche 917 Ks they used to run in Le Mans. And in case you all aren't familiar with the history of this paint scheme, uh, this is definitely significant in Porsche history. Because uh, this is based on, uh, loosely, on the Pink Pig uh, paint scheme that they used to run in Le Mans cars in the late uh, 70s. So this is based off the Porsche 917K. And you can look at all the little details here. I'm actually curious myself because they uh, did quite a job on this. Wow. You definitely get your money's worth out the details on these things because... Um, if you pay on diecast models wholesale, generally you're paying $40, but uh, you can snag these for less than 30 if you try. Um, I definitely would if you can, and I'm going to put my knife down here so I don't risk like stabbing myself by accident, but wow, check out the details. Wow. It just needs more cowbell. Um, yeah, it is definitely cool. Now, some people don't like these don't roll around and stuff, but if I'm displaying it, I really don't want it to roll <laughs> off a shelf. So I'm going to put that there. And yeah, I mean, honestly, mm, I don't know. I think I'm going to take it out the sleeve. I'm going to see how loose this is. Uh, yeah, because I have some 118th where I'm going to be displaying this. This I'm going to save, but... I do not want my 118th being dominated, and that box doesn't really work out for me. Uh, how loose is this? This is held on with tape, and this is not going to come off. I hate to break it to you guys, but it says this is limited edition, and let's see. This is number 207. This is the 993 Sopranos, and this is number... This is really cool because they give you a little serial card in here. This is pretty awesome. Um, I can't say we're going to do the rest of these and show them off, but uh, the pink pig one I definitely wanted to show because that is pretty freaking cool. And just the base. And this, this is a very nice display piece, like I say. I'm just looking at this. It just doesn't seem like there's any imperfections at all, and this is very cool. Yeah, so the RWB is awesome. Uh, I think there's going to be. The Martini one, and I think I ordered the Oba, the Oba Bon one. And uh, the next ones I want to get are Phoenix and Rotana, the red one. And I want to get Rotana for sure. Now, I got to make sure I do not drop this one, putting it in front of my... Actually, yeah, that works out pretty good because that uh, displays well. And that fits in with my hot rod theme. Now, some people are going to look at these cars... And they're going to think, why are you putting this in with all your hot rods and stuff? Isn't that kind of like JDM? But what people don't realize is JDM is kind of part of the hot rod scene, sort of. So it is kind of synonymous with that. So uh, now some people are elitists, like my buddy Toy Hound. They are elitists. They're muscle car snobs. And some people see this as more tuner trash, but I like it. So that's all that matters. Now, some people are very uh, snobby elitist when it comes to muscle cars and the hot rod scene and 
a lot of them do not like the JDM guys. A lot of hot rod guys cannot stand the JDM people. I'm just going to say that much. I'll go on deck to say that. Um, but eh, it's just everyone's got opinions. But again, at the end of the day, um, it is kind of like hot rodding a Porsche kind of type deal because, you know, he's taking these things. He's cutting into the fenders, you know. He's uh, doing, like, mods to the engines. I mean, he's doing all kinds of things to these. So, at the end of the day, this is basically, a, you know, it's a German car, of course, but he's doing all these Japanese upgrades to it, which really uh, soups up the car. And some people, it's a love-hate thing with RWB. A lot of people hate it because, you know, there are those purists out there, but... You know, if Richard Rawlings has enough money to where he can paint a Ferrari black and do it up, then, you know, I think it's kind of cool, honestly. <sighs> I feel like I should wait on this one, but I'm going to unbox it anyhow because this is a pretty exciting piece, honestly. And the fact that I got three of these for the same price I would have bought uh, two of them for, that's a pretty screaming deal, honestly. All right, so... Here's a really cool one. This is the Martini Rossi. Uh, it's a very cool piece. This is the RWB Rough Rhythm number 11, Riders Club. Very cool piece. Check it out in the Martini color scheme. Very awesome livery. I love this piece. Now, in case you aren't familiar with this history, uh, look up Porsche Moby Dick if you're not familiar because that – was the one that was kind of the whale tail kind of Porsche, the Moby Dick racing team, the Martini Rossi racing team. Uh, this history goes back. Uh, this is literally a Porsche racing dynasty pretty much. And this is a very cool piece. Um, if you don't look familiar with the history on it, check out the livery and check out the uh, backstory on it. It's very cool, but uh, yeah, it's basically a liquor company pretty much, but um it's um, very interesting, um, but this paint scheme is very awesome. Now, I want to get this out because I'm going to make this longer. I'm going to make you all suffer. I'm sorry. <laughs> I feel like I'm boxing these today and putting them in my display because I uh, I want to get a few more of these. I don't want to get much and ever spend on these too much. I want to wait for the price drops on them, but man, this is cool. All right, I got to get a hand around this so I don't drop the case because that would suck. This is number 388. This is the Porsche 993 Rough Rhythm. And the other one, I'm going to see if this is a 993 or a 989. Because the numbers are so confusing. They're all 993s, I think. And uh, I always thought the way Porsche does its numbers is very confusing. Yo, Hot Wheels Fever Attic. What up, man? I see you there. Hi. Yo, what up, dog? I see you. I see you commenting, bro. Yeah, check it out, bro. Got my RWBs. Yeah. Been waiting on these forever. Yeah, by the way, surplus goodies, dude, if you're still on. Yes. Heck yeah, dude. I see you. I see you, my brother. I see you chatting me up. Yeah, I got my RWB. I'm very happy with that. Look at all these details, man. Look at how nice these are. I don't have any tarmac works. These are my first tarmac works pieces. I got to say that 164th is a little overpriced in my opinion, but the 143rd price points I'm pretty comfortable with. And check all that out. All right. So in my display, she goes. I have to get my LED remote. Yeah, this is going in front of my Ferrari. I got to, oh, oh, I got to organize this junk now. So yeah, now I have to rearrange this. Oh, wow. Sweet. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, check this out, my dude. Oh, I got to reach over here. Oh, my Lambo fell. I got my Pink Pig one, too, the Sopranos one. Check that out, bro. Ain't that cool? In case you're tuning in and you didn't see before. Yeah. I'm very happy with these new Tarmac Works pieces, man. These are freaking sweet. 
and make sure it's going the same direction as my Ferrari. I put this back and just reach over here and uh, gingerly. Oh, oh man. Yeah, those definitely complement the Ferrari. So it did fit in the strip. Yes, I agree, Hot Wheels, Fever Attic. They are amazing. They are awesome pieces, and I love Tarmac Works. And, in fact, I love them so much, I uh, triple downed and I uh, ordered three. So I'm curious about third piece. I don't think – I'm going to say I don't think this is Phoenix, but I think this is something else. Oh, man, come on. All right. All right, all right, all right, all right. Let me get this last one done. And then I have to show you one more significant piece I got this week at Target um, because that's a really – it's a really nice Lego set. That I, just, I just got finished off. I'm very proud of it, by the way. Um, let me get this open here. And I think this is Phoenix. Nope, I was wrong. Okay. This is pretty awesome. This is another 143rd RWB Porsche. I was talking to my buddy Mike. He doesn't like the wings on these, and he's like, I don't like the wings. I'm like, well, spoilers are kind of part of the downforce aspect of these. So yeah, my fingers are sweating like crazy. I can get a little bit of moisture on my fingers. But I'm trying to get this plastic open, and these are so finicky. And, uh, yeah, these go right in the front. These go front and center in front of the 118th. And, of course, I'm going to save the sleeves and the cards uh, just because it adds to the value. Of course, in my opinion, if they were going to make us spend like $20, 30 $40 or something like this, I think they could have at least gotten the ends done there. You know, a little end cap of cardboard would have helped keep this in real firm. Uh, I just prefer a closed-in box. I think the open-ended aspect is good. But um, if you're really going to let this shine and display it, I don't think you're going to be using this sleeve because, I mean, it's nice to have the uh, background and all. But um, with the situation I got going on with my display, um, I can't have this background because it kind of blocks the 118th in the rear. And I don't like that dominating the background. So I'm going to keep these sleeves, but I really have no – I have a very limited lack of space, and I can't. Uh, have these blocking the uh, 118th, but here we go. Next one here. Uh, this one has a little, see, that's the thing I don't like about these because they don't, I don't like the closed in boxes because again, you feel kind of nervous getting this open that you're going to drop the thing. My only complaint is a sleeve. I don't like the way they've done this sleeve. That's a pain. If you're getting a tarmac works, I didn't know the way they did these sleeves, but I do not like that. I like having a closed box. There's just something about having these seem kind of flimsy. That's just my personal opinion. And it to be a problem to some who are gonna just gonna use these as a case case. But yeah, check her out. Yeah, nice little display card. This tells you can't even read this because it's like gold. Check out the it's gold. I cannot do gold members voice because it's very Odd accent. Um, yeah, this is a 993 again, and this is number 1020. So my guess is they produce about 2,000 of these things and they end the production run. But, yeah, look at how nicely done up this other one is. Very pretty black Porsche. Awesome piece. So now this guy's going to go right over here. Um I'm seriously curious if I'd have if I find another good 143rd, I actually have room to put another one right over here. And I'm just gonna put my LED remote on top of that one. Yeah, so a little bit of a Porsche display. I do like Porsches a lot. They are cool cars. The RWB ones are cool. Um, I really like them a lot. But um now I hate to repeat myself here. Let me go on before. And show you this next piece here. All right. So I put these sleeves aside. Now I finished up a set that took me at least two or three days straight, four or five. Yesterday was the big time of building 
this took me not this took me at least a total of 14 or 15 hours non-stop of work this was a 150 dollars lego set and man was it a painted and actually i'm going to get up to pick it up because if i drop this man you're going to hear some words on camera that i don't that i cannot say on this channel because i'm trying to be family friendly all right now ah uh, yes I was very happy. I got to be very careful because there's stuff that can fall off of this. Wow. All right. This is the 1967 Ford Mustang. And I have to display it on top of my Diora because I absolutely have no more space left. I mean, I'm almost packing my top of my shelf to capacity. And man, what a cool freaking set. <sighs> my only gripe. Is I'm only missing two little pieces. I'm missing this little purple piece. And if you can see the hole right there, I'm missing this little purple piece. I had to call Lego, and now they're going to send me out too. So once I take these off, I didn't let this hold me back from building it, um, but I did get it semi completed. I'm just missing those two little pieces. Now it is a very cool set. You even got, you can do the stock version of this car. Or you can do the modded up drag racing version. You got a chin spoiler, a chin splitter. Um, I did choose, I did choose to put the bad uh, bad five two nine six on there because I like that. Um, I didn't do the rest of the plates. You can change out the plates. They give you pieces and stickers to do different plates. But uh, I was a little lazy and I didn't want to apply all the stickers to the different license plates. But it's cool they give you that. And uh, if you want, you can swap out the supercharger and you can put on the stock air cleaner. But it's uh, pretty cool. And I didn't even build the hood scoop because I knew I was going to build this version. And I already didn't even. Uh, <clears throat> I omitted the uh, rear exhaust because I knew I was going to be doing these shorty headers on here. And then uh, I think the coolest part about this set is this rear suspension and how you can adjust the rake. Uh, via the worm gear, which is a really cool uh, system. And uh, I absolutely love these new pieces. These new uh, American racing wheels are very cool. I mean, they're not really American racing wheels, but they look exactly like it, or Craigers or whatever you call them. Um, and the interior is actually pretty darn nice if I can get the dang door open. Um, you can actually move the seats forward and backward, which is cool, so the rear passengers can get in. You also got a workable steering rack in the very front here, and uh, it steers pretty rapidly, but I will say if you're actually after the turning radius, I will say uh, this thing's got the freaking turning radius of the dang Bismarck. So if you are if you like to really play with them, um, you got a solid rear axle here, so actually... Actually, it's not solid, so I don't know why the turning radius is so, like, meh, but you're not going to get much turn out of this. Um, but anyway, it's uh, very nicely detailed. Um, the rear trunk opens, and inside I put the nitrous tank in there. Um, I did angle the spoiler back because I liked having the spoiler slanted back a little bit. Um, there's a semi-adjustable spoiler, so you can, like, take this and pop it up so you can have it like that or you can kind of have it actually I got it well I'm not going to do it again but you can actually get it to where it's slanted back a little bit but you got the ducktail spoiler in the back so if uh, you're a car enthusiast and you really like putting stuff together um, this is definitely the set for you um, now I want to get a James Bond set but I am definitely waiting till after uh Things, things happen. I'm just going to say things. I'm not going to say, uh, but I'm waiting on the James Bond car because uh, that's a bit of an intensive process. I can only imagine all the gadgetry and stuff and how hard it's going to be to put together. But, man, that, this is going to be a pain. Um, so the seats fold forward, which is really cool. Um, yeah, so it's, it's a really cool set, man. It, it is awesome. Um, so now the... Uh, the roof actually is really cool because you can lift off the the roof and you can display the interior, which is kind of cool. If you wanna, if you wanna leave the roof off, but I'm not going to. But uh, you can actually show off the interior, which is pretty awesome. Um, but uh, I do have to get those missing parts. Uh, but 
sometimes it's just the weight. It doesn't throw off the weight too much to where the quality control gets a hold of things, but it's fine. It happens. So again, in here, you got the blower and uh, I probably omitted some pieces. I bet you anything, some white parts are supposed to go here that I missed on a step. Um, so I might have to go back and see if I got everything correct. Cause honestly, I'm running on empty. I just got a lot of sleep just, you know, yesterday and I was up till two o'clock in the morning, putting this together in a very zombified state. Um, so I have a feeling I might've missed one or two little itty bitty pieces that slipped past my, uh, fingers when I was doing all this, but, uh, just look at how detailed this is. The motor bay. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta kind of, this hole is where it speaks for itself here. You got the strut brace and you got all your things like the fan label, you got the battery and you got the washer tank. Um, you know, I'm interested to see if the James Bond car is going to have all that, uh, just because they had to get all that working gadgetry in there. Um, I'm very interested to build the James Bond set. Um, now I did see the Ecto one at target. Um, and I'm not going to be getting that because not only is that a $200 Lego set, um, this is already $150 right here. Uh, when you buy it in store, um, but the Ecto one is like $200 and that's understandable because it's a way larger, like uh, vehicle, but I'm definitely not going to get that. I don't have the space. I'm a big Ghostbusters fan, but uh, that's really going all out when it comes to Ghostbusters. But my arm is kind of getting tired from holding this dang thing. But this is so cool. I mean, there's very few stickers. It's a very nice set. Um, yeah, I'm spending 36 minutes on this. So let me let you guys go. I'm going to put this back in my stable. Uh -huh. No pun intended. Ow, my arm is killing me. So I've been holding that thing up. That thing is kind of heavy. Um, all right. I know it's been a 37, 40 minute video just for a little unboxing, but I'm running a little slow today. I'm running a little tired and uh, I'm a little tired, a little wired. I'm just thinking of uh, Nicolas Cage's line. But uh, yeah. Anyway, check out my YouTube channel, JMan63. Follow me on J R O D D E R. 1991 on Instagram for all my in-store videos and uh, let's get that subscriber count up guys. We got to get these analytics to the roof, man. I mean, I'm trying to make these YouTube shorts. Uh, I haven't gotten a Patreon, but also follow me on discord um, on the diecast discord channel. Uh, I have the rat fink uh, 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 avatar, but uh, follow me on J R O D D E R one nine nine one on Insta on uh, discord <sighs> Make sure you stay tuned to my channel. Make sure you check out all the latest updates and uh, check out my shorts. Uh, but we definitely need to make it to a thousand before we can do live uh, videos. So right now I'm kind of stuck doing the shorts that are live. But um, definitely, uh, if you can, take advantage of that because now YouTube shorts are the way to go to get your uh, algorithm going. So anyway, guys, y'all have a good day. I'm going to get out your hair. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Oh, hey, it looks like we got a like. Yes. Thank you. And we got two views. Yes. All right, guys. I'm Audi. See y'all later. Hope y'all enjoyed. It's just a quick one for the day. We got more coming. We got a few more things in the mail. But after that, I've really got to put the strap hold on saving. So I've been doing a lot of stuff lately, guys. Have a good one. Bye-bye.